Great, so I'll try to be brief and all the questions you can ask during the day for the challenge. And the main thing that we would be talking is about, you know, this week's challenge and we go through. Um, so I am uh, sharing my screen. Okay, so this week's challenge is on user analytics in the telecommunication industry. And this data is really, you know, the closest to the real data uh, that if you go to any of your telecoms in your country, uh, that is the kind of data that you would get. It is not uh, in any way kind of uh, built up, right? So it's, it's not ideal. It is, it has, it is cleaner because the telco data mostly don't have that much. Uh, they are much more cleaner, but they are complex. And there are different things you would like to understand, especially, you know, how the data is stored, what the terminologies mean, like that. But so within the Tain Academy, I think you have seen it also in week zero. And the most important part is that we want you to think the business first, right? It is, you have worked in week zero, the crisp DM methodology, the business thinking um, comes first. And the reason why that comes first is not, it's not, we are not in the academic, we are training for job, right? Training for job means a job, actually a, a business job requires that you take first and foremost, the business survives. And the business, uh, the things that you do are related to the business growth or what helps the business grow or achieve its goal, okay? And it is within that framework. And therefore, almost always, uh, sometimes written well, sometimes slightly shorter, but there is the business context and you need to really understand what is the business context. You must start always understanding the business need. And the business terminologies are usually outlined in a business term. That means I, the company wants X. The, in this case, for example, an investor to whom you are advising, an investor wants to uh, evaluate the, the profit, you know, profitability of a company, a telecom company. And, you know, they, the breaking down that we help you, because usually that's like, what does, how to translate a business um, objective to a data science objective or a machine learning objective or a data engineering objective is something that sometimes requires a little bit of experience because there are so many things it's like you know from a vague description to something concrete that has statistical mathematical and, and every engineering uh, soundness you know it's like um, a person comes and says i want to build a house and i want the house to to be something i want to use it for to sell things i want to rent it for hotels or that and that is a, a very big you know and to translate that one into some kind of design you actually need um an architect right and then from an architect to actually then translate that one into an actual object then you need engineers and of different forms and 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 mercenaries and, and all that so so it's really almost always it's the same it's like a business need is the client usually with a certain goal and the real goal is that goal. i mean all the things that are done afterwards are actually derivatives to achieve that need so if an architect doesn't understand the person what they want a person wants to build a, a hotel and this person says no no you know they build some kind of factory it's just different it's not it doesn't work so they really the architect must really understand the um, the client the client's needs what they want maybe the client might not actually say it in a way so you, it's the architect who has to ask the question who has to understand and go through so that's why I always be emphasized so in this case as i was saying you know the goal is that there is an investor who wants to buy or that before wants to buy this telecom uh, company but before buying of course they want to do some due diligence um, and such that they can evaluate its profitability if you know if they buy it at certain amount and your task is to basically go through 
the different uh, needs, the user satisfaction um, and engagement and every other thing such that you would advise ultimately uh, this, this wealthy investor, okay? And it's written there, I'm not gonna, I just, uh, so if you have question, you can actually ask, but that's the basic. And I want you to write that one in your own terms. And that's why your, your, your own term, like in your report, for example, in, in the entry, in just try to really write it in some one paragraph, what you really think is the business, you know, the, the objective, right? Almost always start from that. The data we provide you here, it is doable in your computer. So this, this week, there's, you will not have any cloud service. In some weeks when the data or the computation is complex, we try to provide you, um, uh, we try to provide your cloud uh, access, AWS machine. And what I would request you this week, we will, we will set up is a this generate. Again, I will detail uh, how that should be done in, in the Slack, but just in any way generate uh, SSH key, private key and public key, and you should share with us the, so we will give you a form, maybe probably in the Google, uh, classroom that you submit, just the, the public key, your public key, just you have to submit, okay? And that one is not for this week, but for coming weeks so that we have everything what we need from you. But this week you will work on your own computer, you download this data and uh, the features, the, if you want to understand what each features mean, there is a brief description of them here on this one. And the learning outcomes really is that you would be thinking a lot more about the understanding, reasoning in the business context and thinking about suitable analysis uh, as well as also what ultimately matters to, you know, such, um, you know, how to frame uh, and put uh, your analysis into something usable by the client. And then also understanding data provided and extract insight, that means EDA, you will be a lot more working on uh, exploratory data analysis and we usually, you know, we make it this project in the first week because we want you to get that feeling that wherever you do, whether it's data engineering or machine learning engineering, the very first element that you have to get is just that you have to get used to comfortable coding, and you know it, but not only coding, structured analysis. It's not just like only you type something on, on a notebook or, or somewhere without structuring your code. The your code has to be usable. You are now professional and the work that, you know, the kind of some of the routines that you, you're writing now should be usable by others, should be understandable by others. So that's key. So the EDA will really provide that way of like interacting with data in a very, very uh, detailed way. And then you will also build a dashboard to explore data and to deploy your model uh, that will do. I think you have done something similar already on week zero. So that's kind of a continuation. And the most important part is that because this is EDA, that means exploratory data analysis, and because you will be really looking at distributions, you really have to start understanding what, what kind of distribution this looks like. What does that mean, um, you know, uh, in that aspect? So that's, uh, is there a question? Uh, yes, Sabna, do you have a question? Uh, of course, I do have. Um, I was I was reading the the week's challenge document, but um, on the first section of the situation over, uh, we are focusing on uh, university students. I think. What? Uh, you, uh, yeah, the, the investor or uh, is focusing on the university students. I think uh, so. No, no. The telecom uh, and, data. Uh, and the service provider Telco is going to investigate. Uh, are we analyzing, are we going to analyze uh, the, the situation of the user experience on uh, telecom services or what? The subscription of the university students to the telecom service or what? No, I, I think the data is just there and you don't care about university students, you don't care about anything, you care about, you know, like just whether the company is profitable or not, that's the business. And to do that, we break it down into a set of what it means, how, how do you achieve that? So ultimately, 
your goal, as I was saying, is absolutely related to whether the company is profitable or not. That's the sense of it. And you're, you are employed by this investor and the investor really cares about that. And of course, what does that mean that this telecom company is uh, profitable or not? Then you have to break it down into sets of elements. Those sets of elements are how are young people using it? In that case, how are university students? It could be how are, you know, what are the segments of that? So all of that is analyzed. So I'll come to it. But it's your goal is just one and one. The business, the vague term, uh, I want to build a hotel. And then what does it mean a hotel? We will come down in terms of the tasks. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll, I, I will raise my question when we describe the data. Okay, okay, great. So, and in this competence mapping, it's basically is what, you know, we measure 11 competencies. And um, in this case, what each of them are, this one is repeated so that you can really see it over and over. What are we measuring or what we're trying to measure ultimately? And we break down into these sets of professionalism for a global aid job. That basically means whether how you communicate and, um, and how you basically articulate the business value, how you told throughout your analysis, how you relate your analysis back to thing and how you basically just uh, afterwards also describe your work to anyone. Um, so that's the part collaboration and communication. And again, you know, it's like the reporting, you know, your style, your professionalism in that sense, as well as also, you know, uh, your work together within the community as well is measured. Uh, so even if just on this task, this is the reporting side of it, but the collaboration on the other and the community side was also measured. And the software development framework, it's up to how you really become professional. You know, I think I'm going to be again and again and again emphasizing. You are not knowledge here. You're not going to get that much knowledge. If you come for knowledge, a wrong place it is it will take so much time sometimes to get deeper where you are here is to really get as much knowledge as you can while you go but most importantly and the most priority is to be job ready job ready means to be able to perfect some things more important things like software development frameworks really being good at it in python programming being so advanced to it but by advanced it's also not just only advanced but really try and see other types how other in the industry how it's being programmed how in the industry you know how github and cacd is being used how codes are written so that it is enterprise grade you know you are learning that more than how to actually program something right and the same in sql same in data analytics and engineering and ml ops and auto ml deep learning and machine learning web and mobile app programming you are learning what it means, what industry is wanting, the industry's level. We are trying to closer push you and understand it's and then value it while exercising it, how things are done somewhere. Okay, so that's just, uh, I want to emphasize that. And we try to give you, uh, to select um, in 10X, we have also the showroom. The showroom shows the different uh, submissions that we identified to be really good example for everyone to learn. They will be in showroom. So in the first page that you open 10X, that you will find it. Uh, and then this work, uh, sometimes we also provide challenges that are done in a group, but this time it's an individual work. So everyone works on their own, um, of course, while collaborating. You know, As I said, again, it's not knowledge, it's not evaluation. We don't try to evaluate you. All we care is to make you ready for a job. And there are enough jobs, so there's no that much competition. I mean, the competition, there is a natural competition, of course, but, you know, think of it. There is so much jobs there and everyone can have it. I think Arun is the best person in this to tell you that. And hopefully in the coming weeks, he will tell you over, emphasize that it is not school, that there is no grade. There is the grades, whatever, are feedbacks. Like our, you know, why we evaluate your work is to give you feedback. But the, the feed, the grade is instructional grading. They are not um, evaluation per se. They are instructional. That means everything that we grade is to tell you where you are and to, to show you where you should be 
and to direct you how you should go. So these three elements, you know, so in a way, really, really try not to think about competing by great sales, but try to just say, am I job ready? Am I in that journey? You know, who should I take? Who should I help? Who should I bring together so that we are all there? Because when you are all there, you help each other even post this training. So, you know, your mentality should not be university style. Your mentality should be, we're all, there is enough job, not only for us, for the, the batch that are coming, for the next thousands of batch that are coming, there will be job. So it's not really, everyone will get a job as long as they all help each other. And then having and making friends and helping is the most essential element. And you cannot, of course, help doesn't mean that you just do something for the other person or you just copy, but you work together so that you both become or all become good, right? So really think of that. It's the competition should be only a natural kind of like, yeah, it's like uh, energizing competition, not, not grading stuff. No one is going to be up or down. It's all just like whether you got a job or not. You know, it's, it's just that. There is no grade ultimately. It is like all the grades is to help you and to make as many people as possible to be placed in job. And that's our grade. That our final grade is that one. Are you are you prepared? Have you done enough so that you know you got a job? That's it. Okay. And there is enough job for everyone, so there is no need to make someone low or high, blah blah. All of those are to direct, you know, to kind of oh, give feedback. Hopefully this I will repeat and I don't will repeat, everyone will repeat. Okay. And instructions. So the parts that, again, we emphasize on the engineering aspect, because that's what mostly in industries you will be doing. It is the reusable code for data preparation and cleaning. That means you shouldn't just only type things, codes that does one thing, but you should think about how to reduce um, repeated work, right? So that's a reusable code, code connected using some kind of pipeline. You can use Psyche pipeline, but other pipelines, chaining methods such that they are, you think of as more like, Okay, I, I do this, I load data, and from data that I will change to do this, and then from that I would do that. So that kind of pipeline thinking is essential and think about it from day one. And and all of your code, you start, of course you understand, but then even if you write it first, not in a good way, but then try to convert it such that you don't repeat yourself again and again. And you do dashboard that shows findings, SQL data database and SQL is just essential element. Most of our training sometimes fail because we don't sometimes particularly uh, grade them, but this time we we'll really particularly pay attention on your SQL uh, uh, skills and SQL kind of writing. You are, you know, we will provide a lot more uh, that driven. So just make sure that you build your features in, in as a score and in a database uh, as it's written down in another uh, task. So, uh, and then your project uh, folder at least should mirror something like that or better. So that means a readme is a must and it should be people stable or it, it has to be kind of uh, dockerized and it should have GitHub actions so that, you know, whenever you submit, you have branches, you work on basically all that setup, right? And so those are kind of from, from the inside of like this um, software development and kind of developing your code and everything. And from the actual analysis aspects, what you're going to do is that we break it down into four, four phases. The first phase is the user overview analysis. It's basically the pure ADA, you know, just that you do the data, you analyze the data, you understand the data in such a way that you, got, you get some form of understanding of the data. The second part is the user engagement analysis. You basically try to quantify, you know, who is engaged, who is not engaged, kind of segmenting the data. And the other part is that the experience, the user experience, that means some kind of satisfaction, right? Some kind of uh, a way of saying, you know, are they, do they have a good experience, good or bad, or all of these experiences are driven usually by the amount of like uh, churn prediction, right? So are they just, you know, someone who's not a good experience would leave would not use again and again, or would select only a certain segment, but not use another segment. So you're trying to get that kind of their experience. And then in the satisfaction, you basically combine their engagement, their experience, and you try to, to kind of do some kind of clustering such that you understand some form of satisfaction, uh, user satisfaction. So these are your, your you know, four major versions of you, you would quantify whether the company is profitable or not because ultimately 
uh, lots of user engagement means good, right? Profitable. A, a good experience is profitable. Highly satisfied means um, sat, you know, kind of users are going to continue and be profitable. It's growing, whether it's growing, because all of this would relate to to uh, a form of uh, kind of growth of the company, and that's what's related to uh, profitability of the company. So, in this user overview analysis, basically for the actual telecom data set, you are expected to conduct full user overview analysis. This basically means identify the top ten handsets by customer, identify top handset by manu manufacturers, top handsets. Um, uh, handsets per top handset manufacturers, and and you make some kind of interpretation uh, of it, right? Integral communication, you know, you know what CDR is for core data record and XDR is for the data channel equivalent. So basically, you will use that one um, to analyze. And there are subtasks 1.1, 1 .1 and and your employer wants to have an overview of the user behavior on those applications. So basically, you try to aggregate this data into number of XCDR sessions, session duration, total download and upload, total data volumes in byte during the session for each application. In the 1.2, it's that you do exploratory data analysis on the data and communicate useful insights. Uh, basically, you will try to treat all missing values and outlines in the data set by replacing them by the mean of the corresponding column. This is just one suggestion. But we ask you to really look uh, into a different context, you just should be like, okay, what about median? What about kind of if I look at the mode of it? You know, these are all statistical distance. Why? And then you have to think about why am I? Is there another way of like what if like I I don't miss I don't feel them? What happens, right? So these things we we ask you just to be yourself creative and ask and you know kind of collaborate and learn together. And in that element, you're basically expect to report about. You know, using the Python script means modular code, describe all relevant variables, analyze basic metrics, conduct non graphical univariate analysis, means just tables in this case, and conduct graphical, it just basically means, uh, you know, plot some kind of histograms, bar graphs, um, line graphs, anything that are kind of univariate. And then also bivariate means like you relate to kind of correlations between different uh, columns. So that's usually just like when you are. For example, download speed as a function of like session duration, things like that. You would be able, and then you would also need to do some kind of bar, you know, variable transformation, such, such as, for example, you compute the download and upload together so that you will just put them into the form of like data, you know, and then some kind of correlation analysis because what, what variables are correlated. And you do also some kind of dimensional reduction such that you do some, for example, principal component analysis, PCA. To be able to to transform a number of dimensions, uh, why usually you do PCA? It's because you want to check whether there is, you know, all of these parameters, all of these columns are independent or not. Of course, if they are independent, then all of them contribute information, and therefore the number of principal components would be exactly the same. But if they are linearly dependent, then you basically just uh, can combine them to form, you know, multiple dimensions into one. So that's kind of thing. And again, you will learn. So for some of you, so many of these things are new, it's okay, you will just learn. In the user engagement as telecom brand, you know, all online activities, meeting user requirements and creating an engaged user experience is a prerequisite for them to actually be profitable because they want to sell. In all of your country, you can see how telecoms are trying to do that, right? Giving you some incentives so that you kind of get happy, get more data, get more, uh, you know, call times and all that. And so the quality of service to leverage the mobile platforms and to get more users into their business because with less users, no one is going to be profitable. And so basically the user activities um, in the data session is a good starting point and that's what you're going to do. So you basically in the data set, you are expected to track the user's engagement using the session frequency, duration of the session and the session's uh, total traffic, download and, and upload. And then based on the above, you would also do some kind of aggregation and compute some kind of uh, metrics per customer ID, report the top 10 customers per engagement metric, normalize, compute the minimum and maximum, aggregate user traffic, plots the top three, and then using k-means clustering, you also uh, group users in k engagement clusters. That basically means um, you, know, you try to see if there are people uh, that, that are different segments um, and K, you just choose such that you find the best K. 
you know, how, how many clusters are there within this data. And then in the experience analytics, the telecommunication industry has, you know, advanced uh, revolutions in the last decade. Mobile services are good and it's basically you are tracking and evaluating customer's experience to help organizations optimize products and services. That's exactly what they do, right? They try to optimize such that then they give you, okay, now what about a night package or like a, a holiday package? All of those kind of things are inspired usually by some form of analytics and seeing, you know, what is needed. Okay? And so in this sense, you basically uh, look at that and then you would, you have some subsections, aggregate per customer, the following information, average TCP trans retransmission, RTT, handset type, average throughput, and compute list of top 10 bottom uh, frequent uh, lists. And then, and then you basically do a lot of aggregation, the distribution of average throughputs, the average TCP retransmission, and all that you would analyze and you would report on them. And then on the satisfaction analysis, Assuming that the satisfaction of the user is dependent on user engagement and experience, you are expected in this section to analyze customer satisfaction in DAVs. So that basically brings you to like, based on the engagement analysis and the experience analysis, basically task two and three, you would be conducting these ones, engagement score. So you try to compute the engagement score and then you also uh, compute the experience score to each user. And then after that, you basically, um, the average of both engagement and experience as the satisfaction score. Okay, so some form you combine the, the previous ones as part of a score and you compute satisfaction score, and then you will build some kind of regression model for your choice to predict the satisfaction of a score of a customer. So now, if a new customer comes, then you would predict what their satisfaction would be, and that score would tell you, just like a credit score, for example, would allow you to for some form of, uh, you know, um, some kind of loan. In this case, it might help about how you might engage with that user in the future. You know, you might then for those low scored, uh, satisfied ones, you probably try to help such that they get into, you know, you, you basically, basically the company can plan how to bring low satisfied users uh, into high satisfied or assign more resources, for example, to help them like that. And then again, you do a run k means analysis uh, on the engagement and experience score, and you basically aggregate. And basically, these are what you do. And ultimately, what you're going to do is that in, in, in the last task, you will basically uh, deploy it using, um, using basically um, a dashboard that you build and such that people, you know, a, a telecom operator or some manager can actually, when a user comes in, they will basically use your, your model to, to basically identify what would be, what is their expected satisfaction, what's their expected experience, whatever, such that they, they correlate uh, with the real data and their acts, it will help them for decision. Okay. Hopefully that is clear, but you know, this is just much more of um, to bring everyone on the same page, but the whole work starts today. And that's what you do. And in the kind of like what you're going to do on Monday, there will be two tutorials. The one that I just did now as part of this data extraction, cleaning and transforming. GDDR yeah. will give in that and you will get some uh, insight on that. If you, if you are already good, it's fine. This addition, if not, you would, you would start tomorrow. There will be another tutorial by Azaria on exploratory data analysis and insight communication. And then on Wednesday, there will be a modeling session by Anastasia. And on Thursday, there will be a uh, dashboard development by Naptos. And so there will be two submissions, the interim submission and the final submission. And in, in both of them, there will be two, two submissions. So these are two dates, um, two times you would submit. In each of them, you submit two, two things. One is your report, in this case, a slide preparation. And the other one is your GitHub repository link. And uh, so what is, what is expected from you on for the Wednesday submission is just that not more than 15 slides. You'd basically, uh, your exploration of task one, you basically have to communicate it well. And then basically the code that you wrote so far, you would just basically submit the GitHub repository. Like the one, use always one repository per, per one challenge. So, so that as you have seen it in week zero, we definitely do some form of, um, manual and uh, automatic analysis. And so that's important. And the final is the same. 
you would have to report again in the form of slide, not more than 30 slides, and then uh, also a GitHub link. In that GitHub link submission, you will put everything. If you have a screenshot, if you, have, if you haven't deployed your call, your uh, dashboard, please take as much as many screenshots as possible so that we see every uh, the, the kind of like the uh, features of your, your so we basically will depend if it's not deployed will depend on those screenshots to actually grade your or to to think you know, how valuable or how kind of uh, complete the uh, dashboard is so please take as many screenshots and upload them while while you first put your github link in the same submission link basically put as many of your dashboards or any supporting things even here in the uh, in the report if you have something that outside the report you want to put put the screenshots or put the figures whatever floats in the submission okay so that's that's important and we'll always try to put only two submission links so that everything else supporting materials you will always just associate with them if they are related to the codes you would just put them together with the github link and if they are related to your reports you would just put them together with your reports right so and in the leaderboard, this is how we'll just be looking at your um, submissions. So you can just look at them. And here are references. And we will add more references, but these are just the general references that are, uh, and then the design from design perspective in terms of um, dashboard. Great. So that is it for now. And is there any question? If not, I know that you would need some time to digest, and from that on, we will discuss on Slack. Go ahead. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, brief. Uh, my question is, is it uh, uh, we are creating our repository by ourselves, or uh, yes. is, is there any repository which is created by the academy? I think that was only for week zero. So, the template but for now after this you just create your own repository and prepare all the structure yourself but we provided here a thing kind of things to look at like there is the, the structure of for now the structure that we recommend um but again you know it's up to you it's just that's a recommendation okay great anyone else thank you Pleasure. Anyone else? If not, you know, happy work and definitely just let's meet again and discuss and talk and um, over Slack. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Okay, thank you all.